Look forward to where you want to be and spend no time complaining about where you are. Sometimes you're under the influence of things that people said to you when you were really young that no longer apply. You have all kinds of false premises. Perception itself is just what you've decided to make it. We're going to tell you a quick story talking about perspective. Really going to like this. So Esther has a house and a guest house in Southern California. And she returned there and sat at her desk, which is in her living room and was working. And she looked up, she hadn't been there in months. She looked up to look out at where the ocean is, but she couldn't see the ocean because the rains had been more this year. The bushes had grown out and she was obscuring her own ocean view with her own bushes which she thinks is funny because she's always trimming her trees for the neighbors behind her. And now she's blocked her own ocean view, unaware of it. So the gardeners came that day and she said to them, would you please trim these bushes along this fence line? Because I can't see the ocean from my desk. And they said, yes, we will. And then they said, how much do you want them trimmed? And Esther said way back, just get them back there against the fence. So I have a clear view like I used to. And then they said, well, there's something else down in the ravine that is part of the obstruction of your view. And Esther said, well, I own half of the ravine. Somebody else owns the other half. So just don't cut anything that's not on my half of the ravine, but thank you very much. And they said, we'll get your view back. And Esther said, that's great. So a friend picked her up for lunch. They went off for lunch. Then they went shopping. And when they came back, Esther walked across the deck and she looked out. Oh boy, was that view back. It was so beautiful. Then she looked out across the way and she saw two rather large tree stumps right up against somebody else's property line. <laughs> and Esther thought, I'm going to jail. <laughs> and then she thought, how could they have misunderstood me? How could my gardeners misunderstood me? And then she remembered them saying, we'll get your view back. And she said, so now that wasn't what Esther intended at all. And so she thought, well, that house is being renovated and maybe it has new owners too. And maybe the new owners don't know about those trees. <laughs> and then she got distracted thinking about other things and a day or two passed and she just happened to look up and there was a man in a suit standing out on the patio over there looking at the stumps. And then he took his phone out and took pictures and Esther thought, Oh, I have to go confess. So she didn't know how to get into the house because it's across the ravine. She didn't know if she would drive down and then up to it or up and then down to it. So it took her a little while to get there. And all the way she practiced her speech. <laughs> I did that. And I am so sorry. And I'll do whatever you want. I'll plant new trees. I'll plant your whole yard, whatever you want. I'll make it up to you. I am so sorry. And so. She got to the property, made her way in. The house was full of men who were plastering and doing all kinds of things. And she said to them, there was a man in a suit out on the patio a few minutes ago. Is he still here? And they said, no, he left. And Esther thought, oh, all right, no one knew, no one had his number. So Esther went home and just practiced her speech more. <laughs> and then the next day, her friend picked her up for lunch and they went off again. And when they came back, Esther said, come with me. And she took him from the lower house this time out to look. And she said, look what I did pointing over at the stumps. And he said, what? And Esther said, my gardeners cut those trees down accidentally. And he said, what? She said, yeah, I asked him to clean up the view and they did. <laughs> and he said, Esther, those trees were not just cut down. Where's the debris? Why isn't the hillside all torn up? They couldn't have done that while we were at lunch. <laughs> and so they walked out to the edge of the canyon and looked down and up closer to Esther's upper house, there was a little tree that had been all cut down. All the pieces were just laying all down around it. And all that had happened is that they had cut down the tree and then Esther saw something she hadn't seen before. Isn't that interesting? And Esther said, Oh man, that rocks my world. 
there must be all kinds of other stupid things I believe <laughs> circumstantial evidence in other words the way it had unfolded the way it unfolded caused Esther to believe something that was completely irrational when she thought about it when her friend used his rational non guilty mind <laughs> it was completely not rational and there are so many things that as humans you come to believe about yourself and others that are not rational it's circumstantial evidence something that somebody else said and then you kept repeating it until it got all stuck in your vibrational craw and now stands in resistance to you getting what you want but it is not valid everything is about perspective everything is about perception there is no reality that is affecting you it's your perception of the reality it's what you think about and you have more control over that than you are exercising you have the ability to find more satisfaction in more things but sometimes you get oriented toward making trouble or oriented toward looking for problems or oriented toward things that don't feel good step one is a natural thing we're not asking you to have an experience that is not what you want when you really really want something and you're living the opposite of it that feels really really bad we're not saying to you you're making this stuff up but what we are saying to you is you have more control of your vibrational frequency than you have been giving yourself credit and we're also saying to you you believe things that are in your way of what you now want and that's why money doesn't flow to you in the abundance that you deserve it often or that's why things that you really really want don't come it's because you're looking at what is and blocking what you've asked for it really is that simple very good <laughs>
avoid misfortune or avoid an accident or avoid something like that. But how about just increasing love and joy and just having it be more and more and more and more and more and, and increasing the momentum That's of... That's the point of everything, really. What you've just described is why you came. That's what I want. So what do you think is in your way? Well, it's probably just resistant thought, but I, it's got to be. I mean, so we have a really important question for you, and we'd like all of you to think about it, weigh in on it too. When we're having this dialogue, and we know we've set it up, questions, answers, more clarification, and so forth. But are you asking this question from a state of being satisfied? That's how it is, or from a place of not having it and feeling dissatisfied. So you're in a step one moment, and you're verbalizing your step one moment, in this case with words, but you're broadcasting it anyway. So it's been asked and it's been answered. So now the question is, how do you get into the place where that's your experience? And we say, baby steps, you just have to tune yourself into the frequency of it. And most of all, pay attention to when it has happened notice when it's happening notice when you feel satisfied notice when some kind of really fun rendezvous happens esther went to the nail salon last week early in the week and two days later well, her thumbnail just peeled right off for no good reason except she was scraping something off the counter but <laughs> so she knew that she needed to have it repaired before she went too much further she couldn't stand it and so she met her daughter for lunch and they were doing things and then they picked children up from two different schools and Esther said oh we're right by that nail salon do you mind if I just run in and take care of this nobody wanted to do that and Esther is usually the last one to put anybody out about anything but Esther said oh really 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 it'll be really really fast and this just feels like the time to do it Luke is saying I really want to go home because there's a package waiting for me on the porch and it's probably a Rubik's Cube and I want to play with it and Kate is saying well, I've got homework nobody wants to give grandma 10 minutes here because they've got the satisfaction in the selfish life really down good which is just the way Esther likes it to be but in this case Esther's impulse was so strong it overrode her normal tendency which was to just give everybody else whatever they want and she said we're right here suck it up I'm going in I'll be right back <laughs> and so she went in the woman who had done her nail was free she said sit down yes of course I will she took Esther's thumb they're having a little bit of fun and she's saying do you need anything else no just that just that just that just do that just do that and do it fast do it as fast as you can I've got restless people waiting for me do that do that do that and so she's playing and then after about five minutes the woman sitting next to her couldn't take it anymore she said I know who you are <laughs> and I can't believe this I have been asking for a sign Nestor said, okay, law of attraction is real, okay? It, it's a real thing. It was so satisfying to Esther to realize what her feeling of, I'm going in here and I'm going in here now, was all about. It was about rendezvousing with someone. You see what we're getting at? Cooperative components. It's happening to you all the time. And so just pay attention when satisfying things happen. Acknowledge what the setup for it was. Acknowledge that for whatever reason, you were in a place you had accomplished a satisfying vibrational atmosphere in which this new thing could be realized and not revealed see anything that you think you would like to be in your life experience see yourself collecting that data in a sort of metal bank and then when you go into your workshop you can begin assimilating that data and as you do so you will prepare a picture of yourself from which you will begin attracting into your experience the essence of that which has been pleasing you